makes a difference in why people want to stay in that community. I hope it never happens again, but I'll tell you this, if it does, we'll be ready because we have a SID, because we're a nonprofit, and because myself and my partner are there five days a week. And that is the difference. And so that's my story is what ROI is. Go ask any of those 75 businesses if it made a difference. They'll tell you. That's awesome, thank you. Okay, so now we open it to you. All right, Joe. Yeah, um, each town, what is your total budget in your community? What's the population? Population in Milburn is about 20,000. Uh, we represent 500 businesses, so population versus number of businesses. It really is about number of businesses, right? Um, so we have 500 businesses, we have an assessment of 204, and we have a real budget in terms of about 300,000. You have a, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'll explain this up. The town budget, what is the town budget? The municipal budget? The municipal budget. I could tell you that answer. It's, it's not really relevant to oh, the SID, but, right. well it isn't because they're separate funds. Okay, right. I well, I, I wanna make sure it's clear, right? So the, yeah. the assessment that we collect is in no way tied to the general fund of taxes collected. So the, the town um, collects $56 million every year in municipal taxes. We only see 56,000 of that. So 56 million, 56,000, um, the 204 that we collect is not collected as a part of the general fund. It is collected from the businesses. It goes to our bank account, and that's what we spend. So um, you could collect anything you want, municipal taxes, but it's a different rate than the SID assessment. So it's just important to keep in mind that right. those are two completely different numbers. And they shouldn't be conflated. Population and total taxes collected. 500 businesses, total tax collected is 56 million, and we collect 204,000. We at the SID get 154,000. That is our budget, and we have almost a thousand businesses because we have we're 22. Yeah. So we have a lot. Um, what else did you want to know? Is that that's it? That's it. All right. All right. So uh, some, the, the good old town of Somerville. Uh, we're about 2.5 square miles. Uh, we have about 12,500 residents. Our municipal budget is about 26 million. Uh, this SID has a little over 200 businesses. Uh, we have about 175 properties. Um, our budget is 971,000. Our assessment rate is 0.087. Uh, about out of, out of the budget, it's 766,000 that comes from assessment revenue. Um, and <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so we have about a little over 24,000 residents, um, and I, I feel a little irresponsible. I can't tell you the municipal budget at the moment. I have a text out to the CFO. <laughs> um, but our budget's 180,000. Uh, we have um, 180 uh, businesses, 156 properties. But I will get back to you as soon as I can. You're welcome. And, and just to clarify, the 26 million is the 2022 budget, or 2023 budget hasn't been adopted yet, so. And uh, Mayor, what's our budget? Is there a question? Off the top of my head, I don't know. I think it's 17 million. Yeah, that's about right. 17 million, 17 million. 17 million. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
And we're, and we're 7,000 something people. 7, eight, just shy of 8,000 yeah. residents. So yeah. just, just to get a, you know, to have, have, you have an idea mm -hmm. of what we're dealing with. I, I will say too, uh, just coming off of the Main Street Conference as well, I connected with a, an exceptional quantity of communities as Main Street programs and who also have a similar program in place that uh, <laughs> express that their communities are about 1,200, 1,500, very, very small communities and they have these programs and processes in place. So uh, as far as the industry is concerned as in economic development, we would be considered as a mid-sized community from what I have discovered. We're not a small community as much as we certainly are. Uh, and if we feel that way, uh, as far as the numbers go, we would be considered more a mid-sized community because of our 8,000 number. And we spent a lot of time thinking about should this budget be 125, 150, 250, and you know, based on, on my knowledge as a SID director and, and what it really costs to provide these services, if I had come to you guys and said, it's a $125,000 assessment, I'd be selling you a product that you couldn't run. It just wouldn't be enough money. And so you'd end up with a SID that couldn't function. Um, I'll tell you this, I ran actually the smallest assessed SID in New York City. Uh, for, for many years, it was a $110,000 budget. We also had to raise, over the period of five years, we raised a million dollars in cash. So you can say, yeah, well, we didn't take much in taxes, but we also had to have an executive director that could raise a million bucks. A million dollars doesn't fall off the tree. And so you have to be very realistic as property owners, as business owners, that it costs money to do business. Um, and you know, it's, it's important not to, I think, get into this world of saying, well, 150, 175, you have to come up with a number that really makes sense for the services you want to deliver. Um, and that's what we spent a year working on um, versus, you know, what is the average assessment? What's the median assessment, right? We had to look at which properties are going to be driving the numbers um, to really cover, right? So there's some large properties that are going to cover the majority um, of, the, of the assessment. And every district is that way. And so it's less... I think from a SID professional perspective about the number you're charging versus what does that number get you on the street? I'd be glad to give you $125,000 budget and in three years you'll be calling me saying, you know, we should really increase the budget, it doesn't work. So you either get it right the first time or you either get it wrong the first time you come back and do it again. Well, maybe I just want to ask one other question. You yes. made a statement that the ordinance states that the building owner has the sidewalk and carrying on responsibility. Um, I made a call to the tax assessor and went through it and went, left a message for Tom that the um, building owners do not own the sidewalk. All assessments are done for the front face of the, of the building. So there should be no reason for any of the building owners to fix what's been deteriorating from the, all the problems of the last, you know. Sure, yeah. Uh, it's not so much the, the repairs, it's the, it's the cleanup. It's, well, it's the weeds, it's the snow, it's all those things. That, that's that's that part still, of what the ordinance currently states well, right still, and the garbage. That is still the town. Yes. It's not the building owner. The trees should be pruned, which they're not. The, the, uh, the paper should be sprayed so that there's no weeds. The problem is that we have weeds because of the contract was not lived up to by the, by the developer. They're supposed to put a special grout in there that weeds would not allow to grow, and it didn't do that. And that's why, remember they were charged to connect for like $250,000? The $250,000 they didn't get because the walls, the job was done wrong, and their walls were flooded. Yep, I, I hear you completely, and, Karen, and Karen, with, Karen, I, and I'll, I'll give that. it to Karen in just a second, but with, with the improvement district support, we'll be able to take care of whatever needs to be taken care of and support with the borough so that things can be repaired. That should go okay, as long as the borough is paying for it, not the, the, the city. It's, it's, it's however we make the arrangements and whatever is the responsibility of each department. It's the partnership that makes the most sense to have a, a positive agreement with each other that you are going to do this, we're gonna do this, and we're gonna work together to make it whatever it needs to be fixed. Um, I'm just gonna pass it over to Karen to answer that too. Sure, so thank you. So we have something similar in Cranford where, um, you know, the township is responsible for fixing the paper. So I like to think of myself as Girl Friday. So uh, today I was working with the paving company to fix our papers that were a little skewed. Um, you know, we work with the DPW on making sure the weeds are removed. Um, you know, they're starting to come out like wildfire right now. So that was a phone call with the DPW. We also work with our um, you know, our larger properties that have come in that, you know, also made promises to our town and the things that they were gonna take care of and, you know, make sure that they're following through. And so, you know, I feel like that is something that, you know, 
falls on our office and, and we're very successful at. Yeah, we have a similar situation in Milburn where uh, yeah. the township, right? So for instance, we built a, a beautiful parking deck, but nobody bothered to put a sign on it to tell anybody that it's the parking deck. And so for eight years, no one's known that that's where you're supposed to park. That has a negative impact on our downtown because we have a ton of street parking that's on this bike. Oh, they can hear me. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you that. Do it, do it. So, um, so we went, because we have our own branding guidelines for all of, for, our, for our district, and I went to the business administrator and I said, listen, we will project manage the sign installation on the deck if you pay for it. And he said, well, it's our property. We should be paying for it, but I don't have the time, the manpower, or the branding guidelines that you do. Can you bring in the vendor, do all of the work, and then we'll pay the bill? And so obviously we, he, we worked together as a team, right, to make sure that it met his expectations, but it was such a relief for our VA to not have to do yet another project when we would do it right. And so now we have beautiful signage all over our parking deck, and that is the point of years, you're talking about partnerships. So yeah, small stuff like weeds and bricks, that gets done, but also when you need to put signage all over your deck that costs 40 grand to do, the town couldn't do it. They didn't have the ability, we did. And so it's small stuff, it's big stuff, but it's that yeah. extra oomph that a Sid can give because you've got eyes on the street. I will, I'm sorry, Natalie, just real quickly, like from a virtual perspective, we do already pay for some of that work, but we're <coughs> limited to how much of the town that we can do that for. So right now, last as of last summer, we worked with Plant Solutions and they took care of some of the tree beds in the middle of the actual, I like to call it a triangle, because it's really a triangle, let's be real, uh, in the triangle space, right? And we, um, they completely did a tree root excavation, they took all of the weeds out, everything in those specific areas. But that's all that we could do, because that's the budget that we have. I, you know, you know, everybody in this room knows as good as anybody that the budget you got is whatever you can do, right? If we can do the entire town, great, let's make it happen. But as of right now, that's what we're doing. We're expanding a little bit more this year. We're putting $3,500 into expanding a little bit more of those trees in the center of town and making sure that at least the center of town is visually appealing. But I would love to put more into that and expand into the other areas of the community. But as we all know, we're all limited. Yeah, so uh, in Somerville, we actually have a, a little bit of the opposite, right? So uh, the way that our sidewalk ordinances are written in town, the property owner is responsible for the sidewalk. But any time that a tree uproots the sidewalk or there's uh, any work that needs to, to, to be performed on the sidewalk that's caused by the tree grates or anything like that, we actually come in and we replace the entire sidewalk and not just the public portion. We curb to storefront, we replace it. Um, we actually um, started a tree replacement program where every year we're replacing two to three trees based on the cost. Uh, we work with our environmental commission to identify trees that might need to be removed. Um, and during that process, we redo all the sidewalks with that as well. So, um, and that is again, funded through the, the, the special assessment. So um, again, it is a partnership, a public-private partnership, right, with the borough. Thank you. Um, Brenda, I saw that you had your hand. Um, yeah, where do you guys work out of? Are you all in the municipal offices? Are you working from your homes? You know, where do you work? And how would a tenant or a business find you? What's the most common way that they would find you as a rep of the town? So in Union, we have an office that's on the street. So we're right, in the, we're right in the heart of things. We're right in the heart of the center. So that's the way we do it. And uh, I know we say it's 9 to 5, Monday through Friday. It's not. No. It's never. The phone rings on Sundays, I pick it up. So you know, that's the hours. We're not standing on the door for that fact. But also my cell phone number is on the door in case anyone goes there, has a question, needs help. But uh, we have the signage on the door. And when we do the welcoming packets, everybody, they get that information. So well. you rent space from some, some landlord? We do rent. In your budget. That, that we do that. I know not everybody does that, but we do that. Yes. We do as well. Okay. Does anyone else have anything different? Oh, yeah. Uh, so my office is in the municipal building. So um, my office is actually like an arm of the township. So we are actually not a 501c3. Um, you know, the township supports our office, and that's how um, we work. So we were able to just be like right down the hall from our CFO. Uh, from zoning, from building, and so when businesses come to see us, I literally walk them through every department in the building. Uh, they always know where to find us. But, but how do businesses get to you? 
how, how is the number in there? Um, well, my hours are pretty consistent. Well, actually, they're not consistent at all. But uh, they're supposed to be Monday, um, 8.30 uh, to 4.30, Monday to Friday. Um, but pretty much every business owner and property owner has my cell phone. Um, they call me. They text me. Um, you know, I'm pretty much, like, I feel like I work seven days a week, unfortunately, sometimes. <laughs> but, um, but those are my hours. And, you know, we've never, I've never had a problem connecting with businesses in town. The current businesses. But yeah. I'm talking about a perspective. I have to say, the landlord, the landlord relationship between landlord and city is, it's numero uno, and that's where you get people who are coming into town as a business. The landlord will specifically point to us and say, you know, go talk to Jay, go talk to Karen, go talk to anyone. We'll, they'll walk you through. I have a very, very relationship with the building department. They don't love when I come in because they know that I'm going to start talking to them. And do, but it's what we do. Whether it's signed permits or permits for the building for the CO, uh, whether it's a question or comment or concern, sidewalks. We work very closely with DPW, the health department. So, you know, how do they hear about us? It's usually through the landlords. That's a really big way of them coming to us. Um, and if I could just add on really quick too, new businesses reach out to us usually on social media or they call our office or yeah. email. And so most of the time, we don't even list properties for sale. We actually like do the negotiation. Well, it's not that we're actually negotiating fees, but we do the introductions between the property owner and the business owner. So sometimes we know when a business owner is leaving before the property owner does. Sometimes we know, um, you know, so we're able to kind of manage that relationship. So there's not a lot of, um, you know, time in between vacancies. So um, we do all, all of the above, but we also have a page dedicated on our website that has stats that a prospective business would want to know coming into town. And then we have a contact form that they can fill out right online to schedule a tour with us. Um, that form comes directly to my email, so once I get it, I'll reach out and say, you know, thanks for, for you know, reaching out to us. You know, here, you know, we, we actually work in a co-working space, which is, uh, <laughs> which is different. Um, but we, we work at a co-working space because we're not there a lot. You know, we, we walk the district, we talk to our businesses, we're constantly on the street. Um, so having an actual office in Borough Hall just was not, you know, our Borough Hall is all the way at the end of our district, so it didn't really make sense for us. So when we were moving out and realized we had absolutely no furniture because the borough owned it all, um, we decided to jump into the co-working space because they provided all of those things. But the website is a huge feature because we actually, um, if people do reach out to us on social media, we put them, you know, we give them that resource and then we also connect with them. My office is in Borough Hall, obviously I'm a borough employee. Um, and I interact with the zoning department and with the zoning office and, and the construction department and all the land use boards. And uh, I've also been a resident in town for 39 years. Um, I raised five children in town. People know who I am and they know how to find me. Um, and and it's worked, that's been a, an advantage for sure. Um. So the ordinance in Milburn that established the Special Improvement District actually requires that our office be located in Town Hall. Um, our Town Hall is located in the heart of downtown. And it also requires that we pay no rent. So that's not an overhead charge for us. So it's great, I have proximity to all of our department heads, our BA, um, and we pay no rent. We use a shared printer, shared internet. So we have zero operating costs. When it comes to that, it's a blessing. Um, because that money that would go to that now goes to the businesses and property owners. Um, in terms of how do we engage, I think everybody covered a lot of it. We have a great available properties page that we update on our website. Uh, just someone today wanted to open a, a, a supermarket in town, small kind of boutique thing. They said, where can I start the process? So I sent it to our available properties page. I said, check it out, call me up, I'll walk you through what might be appealing to you. Um, that conversation will then continue, right? Of, well, what sign am I allowed to have? What kind of parking restrictions are there? I work with our zoning and land use boards constantly. Sometimes I annoy them and try to get them to make the zoning more business friendly. Sometimes I just try to walk people through the process. Um, we also, you know, in terms of engagement, I think I'm like the others. I don't think there's anybody in Milburn that doesn't have my cell phone number. Um, it's modern technology. I get texts all day. Actually, I counted one week. I, I get an average of 35 phone calls a day for business owners. Um, that's a lot of calls during one day because it's small problems, it's big problems, it's just questions. Um, you have to be, again, I get paid to be there five days a week. That means I can handle 150 phone calls a week, right? Because I'm there, I can do it. Um, it it's a big difference between a volunteer who should never pick up 150 phone calls a week um, versus having a paid employee. So um, I think 
it, it depends on what the town needs. I think certainly if you don't have to have the overhead of rent, that's a great thing. Uh, right now you don't have rent, uh, which is terrific, but um, what does that mean? You have an, an office for 40 hours a week, but you have an executive director there, there for 10. It doesn't get the job done. We need a full-time executive director to, to handle all the needs that come in with that office space. And just for the record, I do get phone calls already. <laughs> I, just, I just want to say one more thing real quick. And, and let's not forget the fact that we are part of it, but the board is also a huge part of it because you're now working with people that are you. Okay, we respond to the board. We have meetings with the board monthly to be able to hear what's going on in the street that we might be missing. We won't miss a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And we have one more question. This is just a, a burners of a specific aspect. So when we're when we're debating board composition, I think we're looking at 15 members. Um, we would have uh, pretty much an equal distribution of property owners and business owners. So the board of directors that would be in charge of establishing the budget, the service portfolio, staffing, etc. Those are all people who would be actually paying the assessment. So it wouldn't be people that don't have a stake in it. Um, we've, we've developed that specifically. And so if this ordinance were to be introduced to the, town, uh, to the borough council, um, part of that would be the bylaws and the board composition. So they would have to vote on approving that um, when they vote to approve the city in general. Uh, we're gonna take one more question because unfortunately our fabulous library needs to close. Um, I know Harvey's had his hand up for a few minutes, but we will invite you to just walk a couple steps across the street to the Trattoria if you'd like to come meet us there. I know they're open a little bit later, um, so come meet us for, for more questions and conversation there. But Harvey, go ahead. Okay, obviously we're here because you'd like to introduce an ordinance in the town to have this, what's, what's the time frame for getting this ordinance started in place, process? Okay. Well, I'm not an elected official at this time, so I don't get to choose. Neither um, am I. That's why I'm. It, it can be fairly quick. So, um, 